in the name of Jesus. Amen. We live in a world with incredible dissatisfaction. National survey found that a majority of young people today are struggling with some mental anguish, stressed, fearful, and other mental strains. Of those, most of them had no idea how to find support or answers for what they were going through. When I heard the story, I read the story, I, I wanted to raise my hand and say, I know the answer. <laughs> I know the answer. We live in a day where young people, to the greater percentage than ever before in the United States of America, don't know who Jesus is, don't know what a Bible is, never been to church. They are ignorant and almost devoid of any concept of who Jesus is. And no doubt that is discouraging, but, but what a wonderful opportunity for the church to be the church because we really do have the answer. We really do. The answer is Jesus. We live in a day where it, it, racial strife is on the rise. We live in a day where politics has divided people like never before. We live in a day where there is much dissatisfaction with traditional Christianity. Uh, one of the most sought after popular terms in Christianity today is non-denominational. What does that say? People are uh, dissatisfied and unhappy with traditional Christianity and so they have left the denomination and they don't want to be in that denomination and so the thing that appeals to them is the idea of no denomination. Amen. And the challenge is they don't really know what they're getting because they're still getting the same beliefs. They just erase the denomination their beliefs come from. But let me encourage you today that, that, that what they need is what we have. Amen. What we have today is a biblical revelation of the nature of Jesus Christ. We have a biblical revelation of the original message of salvation. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm telling you that everybody that you meet tomorrow, every person that you know in your life, what they need is to be born again of the water and of the Spirit. Every one of them, if they would repent of their sins, they would feel the relief that only comes through repentance. If they've not been baptized in Jesus' name, if they would get baptized in Jesus' name, they would feel what only the baptism in Jesus' name will do for them. Come on, somebody. If they would receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and have the evidence like they had it in the Bible, speaking in other tongues, that, that would do for them what nothing else in this world will do for them. Everybody needs to be born again of the water and of the spirit and the answer to the dissatisfaction the answer to the trouble and strife is Jesus Christ his name his baptism his spirit his work his power in their life do you know the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost really is the answer for racial strife Amen. I'm telling you, when you get baptized with the Holy Ghost, it'll make you love everybody. And if somebody isn't loving everybody, they need more Holy Ghost. They need more Holy Ghost. I don't even know where this comes from, but I think there's some comedy skit, something about more cowbell. I'm telling you what this world needs and the church needs and I need and you need is more Holy Ghost. Amen. I don't care what it is that you may face. Amen. If you and I could have a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It would help us to deal with whatever we're going through. And my prayer over the past few days is God, I want more than I have. I want to see more than I've seen. God, I want a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost in my life because I'm hungry and I'm thirsty for the work of God to be done in my life. Amen. You know, there, there's, it's possible to position yourself to be more hungry than you were before. Uh, I know we've been fasting, so I'm not saying this so that you'll think uh, highly of me, uh, but I can tell you I have thought about food more in the 
time that I've been fasting, I, you know, I, I hear, I hear things like watermelon. Like I don't ever notice hearing watermelon, but I hear watermelon. Uh, I, you know, I, I've actually thought about eating a, an enchilada. I don't like enchiladas. I think I could probably expand my palate if I just go for 30 days without eating. But I, I am positioning myself through not eating food to think about food more. I am more hungry and, and willing to potentially, I don't want nobody getting wild ideas, eat things I wouldn't have eaten before. Why? Because I'm physically hungry. Why am I physically hungry? Because I'm positioning myself to be physically hungry. How do I position myself? I don't eat. Amen. And what happens? I'm more hungry. The same is true. We can position ourselves to be more hungry for the things of God if we will just set our hearts and our minds to say, I need more of God. But the way it works spiritually is just the opposite of how it works naturally. The less you eat, the more hungry you get in the physical realm. But in the spiritual realm, the more you eat, the more hungry you become. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You want to feel a greater spirit of prayer in your life? Pray a little more. And the more you pray, the more you feel the spirit of prayer. You want to feel a greater hunger for the Word of God? Read the Word of God, and you'll feel a hunger to read more of the Word of God. It's just the opposite spiritually as it is physically. Amen. And I'm telling you tonight, I feel a, a hunger. And, and you know, one, thing, one way for us to get hungry and thirsty for righteousness is to be willing to put our bodies in a position where we're hungry and thirsty physically. It is a way we, we are able to turn down some of the distractions in our life. Amen. Amen. I, I want to encourage you today that what I need and what you need is more church and not less church. What you and I need today is not, not less prayer, but, but more prayer. Amen. I know people that I love and I pray for, and, and, and I know the less they come to church, the less they think they need to be at church. But the more you come to church, the more you think you need to be to church. That just illustrates to me the, 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 the legitimacy of that point. The more you eat with God, the more you want to eat. Because there's something about the spiritual dimension. The more you exercise your faith, the greater your ability to exercise faith. The Bible talks about according to the measure of your faith. According to the, uh, if, if you are, are, are given to prophesy, prophesy according to the measure of your faith. If you're going to give, give according to the measure of your faith. And why is that? Because when you will operate, no matter how small a dimension of faith you may think you have, if you will obey God in the simple things, when, when you feel that affirmation, the confirmation, I did what God told me to do. Your, 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 your measure grows. Amen. And, and we can develop a boldness. We can develop a confidence that when the Lord says take a right, amen, and go to Walmart, we can take a right and go to Walmart and say, here I am, Jesus. Amen. 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 Our souls cry out. I... I uh, I was talking to a man I know, and I've known him for a long time. And uh, he, his wife called me, and then uh, he called me. And uh, uh, they were in a, in a situation where a young man came in the room. He's in a room with a bunch of uh, people that are in a non-denominational meeting setting. It's not really a church. It's just they get together and worship God. I guess it is a church, but they don't have a church building. And, and they're all from a particular denominational background, but they're tired of the denomination they're out of. They're tired of all the mess, all the committees, all the stuff that happens in, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying. 
And so this young man came in and was in desperation. And this, this man that I know, his wife that I know, uh, they don't know everything they need to know, but they hung around me enough to learn John 3. They hung around me enough to know about Acts 2.38. And this young man was in this place where he was hungry. And, and this, this, this man that knew Acts 2.38 and John 3, he began to talk to him about John 3 and accept a man be born again. And Acts 2, repent of your uh, uh, sins and be baptized in Jesus' name and get the Holy Ghost. This man has decided he, he, he wants to uh, get baptized this next Sunday. And he called me and said, I need you to help me. They think I know more than I do. But I do know this little bit, and I think they may be open to get baptized in Jesus' name. They, they may be open to receiving the Holy Ghost. I, I need you to help me. And I believe the world is full of people that if the Lord could just anoint our, 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 our presence, our personal presence, that the Lord would anoint us, that, that God could use us to spark a conversation that would open the door uh, of hunger in their hearts, and God would give us words, fitly spoken words, that would open that door a little more, and there might be an opportunity of witness and transformation and personal revival that they might not have experienced yet. Amen, amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. As I thought about this, I thought of an old song. Amen. I actually pulled up the, the YouTube video of it, and there was the album cover. I remember it being in my, in my house growing up. I can remember my mother. Uh, uh, if you can wear out a record, I bet she wore out some records. And it was one of those records that she used to listen to. And it was a song... Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Only He can take your life and make you whole. He'll give you peace. You never do. Sweet love and joy and heaven too. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. If you could have the fame and fortune... All the wealth that you could obtain. But had not Christ within your life, your living here would be in vain. There will come a time that death shall call you. Riches cannot help you then. Come to Jesus. And He, only He can satisfy your soul. Only Jesus can satisfy the need and the lives of people that we know. How many broken people do we know? How many broken homes do we know of? And the great challenge today is people will go to every route. They will, they will search out every source. They will bend every door. They will break every window. They will do everything in their power to make things like they want it. And at the end of the day, they got broken doors, broken windows, and they still got a mess. But only Jesus. Only Jesus. You want things to work out in your life? Get your eyes. Get your focus. Get your heart. Because He's the only hope. He is the only hope for this world. Amen. Amen, I'm done. Let's stand together. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever, whatever amount of, of, of effort you've made so far this week in the area of fasting and separation and turning off the voices and distractions in your life amen i know it's i know it's hard uh brother bj shared that uh, that on monday that he had a free lunch to eat today was cake day chocolate ganache man that just sounds good i said how was he, he said i wouldn't know i haven't had anybody i had somebody call me want to take me to dinner monday night I had somebody call me Tuesday and want to take me to lunch. Hey Amen. I bet, I, I bet that hadn't happened in, since the last time I fasted. I know it's not easy, but I, 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 I encourage you to press through those. Amen. 
Now, I, I, I was tempted to think, well, this is the Lord's way of saying, I, you don't need to fast. I sent you lunch. <laughs> but I don't think that's what it means. Amen. So I encourage you, let's just be open to God. Be, uh, open our eyes to the people around us. And I am praying that the Lord would help all of us play some small role in someone's life. I know that personally I wish that everybody I witnessed to, everybody I've baptized, everybody I've seen get the Holy Ghost, everybody I've taught a Bible study, I wish they were all here tonight. We wouldn't have seats for all of them that I've... And if you had everybody that you've talked to and helped, if they were all here tonight, we, we would need another building. Amen? But the Lord is, is perfect in His ways. I will tell you this. Yesterday I, I had went and bought myself a new printer because I couldn't print. Uh, for a few Sundays and preacher doesn't need to be in a bad mood right before he preaches because he's messing with a computer and so uh, I went and bought a new printer I had the box and I uh, sister glory will be glad to know I was putting the box in the balcony upstairs she loves for people to put stuff in the balcony and I was I opened the door and I was trying to figure out where to put it and I I, I truly believe it was the voice of the Lord and I felt like the voice of the Lord said to me, do you believe these balconies can be filled on a normal service? And I felt like Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones. Lord, thou knowest. Amen. And I, 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 I told Brother Ryan this and he said, well, I, he's tested, where's Brother Ryan? Brother Ryan, why don't you tell him what you, what you dreamed one time about the balcony? It was full. I, I, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know where it's going to come from. But I do believe this building hasn't been built here so that 15 people can be here on Wednesday night. Or 30. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give yourself a hand again for being here tonight. I hope, I hope you leave here tonight fed. It is our desire. I know it's true for everybody that has any... Uh, any uh, participation in the ministry we want you to be blessed when you leave and one thing that will help you be blessed is come hungry I say that again come hungry I say that again come hungry if you'll come hungry I'll preach better if you'll come hungry brother Nate will sing better come on somebody if you come hungry everybody else will be blessed a little more so come Sunday let's all come to church Sunday hungry and let's see what the Lord will do. Amen.